If you're like me and you've got fed up with messing around with extension cables strewn all over your workshop every time you use a power tool, then I've got a nice little project for you today that's easy to do, it's going to make your workshop safer, and it's going to give you power from your workbench forevermore. Even though more and more of my tools these days are battery powered, I still have plenty of mains powered tools. And it always seems that when I'm working on this center workbench, that I end up with cables hanging everywhere, which is not only difficult to work around, but obviously dangerous as well. If you've got any trailing cables, you've obviously got a trip hazard in the workshop and the potential of pulling tools off of the workbench. And either of those can end up damaging the cables and you end up with an electrical problem as well. So that whole scenario is not a good solution. So the project today will address that. And while I'm addressing that, I might as well sort out another couple of issues I've got. The first one being is that I know that some of the tools I use on this workbench are latched tools. That means I can turn them on and they keep running without me touching them. For instance, a router. Any latch tools in the workshop should be used through an NVR switch. And if you don't know what an NVR switch is, you would have seen them on some of the bigger tools. An NVR switch, a no voltage release, is something that sits between the power source and the tool. And if for any reason you lose power, let's say the breaker trips in your consumer unit and the tool is still left on, when the electricity comes back on, that tool won't start until you've reset the NVR switch or just hit the on button. Let me show you an example. So if we have a look at my band saw, this actually has an NVR switch already fitted. Just to show you how it works, at the moment it's being powered from this power strip here and the power is on. So if I start the band saw, if I then lose power by cutting power, obviously the band saw stops because I've cut the power. But if I reintroduce the power, then nothing happens until this NVR switch is reset or I just press the green button again. So this means if I'm using this and the power is interrupted for any reason and I walk away from it, when the power comes back on, it doesn't automatically restart. Now the bigger machines tend to have these NVR switches already fitted, like this one and this one and this one and like this. So it's the bigger machines that have the NVR switches already fitted and essentially already covered. It's the smaller tools like routers like this that I have the concern. Now the third item is a project that's coming up fairly soon for me is to install a router on this workbench hung underneath with a router plate on the top. Well keep watching because that'll be a project coming up in the next month or so. Now when I do that the last thing I really want to do when I turn this router on and off is to be scrambling underneath the workbench in the dark, trying to find its on and off button to be able to control the router. So really, I want to be installing a button on the workbench that's convenient to get to, to be able to power this and any other tools that I use on the workbench. So I've gone and purchased this emergency stop button from Amazon, which is also an MVR switch as well. So I'm gonna be installing this and then downstream of this, install a power strip. So any tools coming off of that power strip will be protected by the MVR and they'll be able to be controlled by me somewhere convenient on and off at a moment's notice. So I think that's enough talk. Let's get on and install this switch. I decide to install the switch exactly where I usually hang my brush for exactly the same reason. It's my natural go-to place being right-handed. As I have four inch square legs on this bench, I can afford to remove some material to allow the switch to fit straight into the timber leg without compromising its capacity. So I mark out what needs to be removed and then get to it using a drill to remove the bulk and then a hammer and chisel just to square things up. If you don't have a leg on your workbench of this size, then I would suggest making a small box out of ply or MDF that the switch can fit in and then can be mounted conveniently somewhere on your bench. So 
sometimes it's nice to be able to do some chiseling that's never going to be seen again. Oh, it's a lot easier doing it. Before anyone says anything, this chisel is what's called a through tang, which means this piece of metal is the same as this piece of metal with a rubber grip around it. That means I can use a hammer before anyone starts writing in about mallets. I've decided I want the power strip to also be on the right hand end of the bench as I look at it from where I normally stand, as cables coming from the right just seem to feel, well, right. I know all the tricks about using tape to help mark out the correct width of fixing holes in the back of a power strip, but I like the excitement of not quite knowing if I'm going to get it right. The strip does tell you on the back the distance the screws need to be apart, in my case 168 millimetres. So having marked the first one, I set the tape on it at 100 millimetres and then put a mark at 268 millimetres. Holding the tape like this at 100 millimetres is more accurate than trying to use the end of the tape, as long as you remember to add the extra 100 millimetres to the distance you're measuring. With fixings like these, to get them tight is just an iterative process. If it's wobbly, then tighten the screw a bit. If you then can't get it on, then loosen the screw until it slides on with a bit of persuasion. I arrange the cable so I can always remove the switch in the future by putting some slack back into it. So I've got both cables coming through the back of this recess for this switch now. This is the power strip in the black and this is the incoming cable, the other end of which I'll put a plug on and stick into the socket. Now this cable is 1.5 millimeter squared flex and I've gone for the 1.5 millimeter squared which is fairly chunky because it's rated at 13 amps and I want this whole system to be a 13 amp system which is like the highest that I can make it. The plug's 13 amps, the outlet socket strip is 13 amps so I want this cable to be 13 amps as well. If I used a one square millimeter cable here that's only rated at 10 amps so I'd have to downgrade the fuse and downgrade this whole thing to a 10 amp system. If I didn't downgrade the fuse and left it at 13 amps, then the weak point would be the cable. So if I actually took it up to 13 amps, then this cable would be the first thing starting to melt, smoke and do all kinds of nasty things that I wouldn't want it to. So you've got to make sure that the cable you're using is rated the same as the fuse. And if anything, the thing that wants to be the weakest link should be the fuse. And that's the whole point of having a fuse on the system. It definitely, definitely shouldn't be the cable. As the connections on the back of the NVR switch have male spade connectors, I decide to fit my cables with female spade connectors, which are just crimped on around the wires. You could alternatively solder the wires directly onto the connectors, although you would have to make sure that when you're doing this, you don't put too much heat into them that ends up damaging something inside the switch. Obviously at this point you need to carefully follow the wire instructions for your own switch because there's different ways of doing this. But mine are very straightforward with the two incoming wires connected at the bottom and the two outgoing at the top. The earth cables are connect to each other using a spring lever connector which will just end up sitting at the back of the recess I've made in the timber.
I measure out around seven meters of cable, which should give me plenty to comfortably get to a socket wherever my workbench is in the workshop, and then fit a 13 amp plug to the end. All of the components here for the project are easy to come by and I'll put links for all of them in the detail section below the video. With the switch wired up, I can pull through the cables and get it into its final position. Obviously, as my workbench is made from wood, I don't have to worry about earthing it. But if you're fixing this to any bench that can conduct electricity, then it should be properly earthed for your own safety. As the cables exit out the back of the switch enclosure, I dress them neatly and then go overboard with clips just to ensure that they can never pull out of the back of the switch if they're pulled in the future. Just a little tip if you're doing this on timber, these P-clips that actually screw in give you a far better connection than these standard nailed ones that you use. It means that you can really get a nice tight joint into ply. I always think the ones with the nails are okay, but there's always that chance they're gonna pop out any second, you know? That's pretty solid. I route the cable underneath the workbench so it can find its way to a convenient socket. For added safety, I also fit a floor cable protector to ensure that I don't have a trip hazard anymore. So moment of truth, I'm going to plug it into this strip that I used on the band saw just to give it power and it is on. Just test first of all with my electrical tester. Give it a bit. Very good. And if I plug in my router, I'll turn the router on first. There's no bit in there. And that's really nice being able to control it from here rather than having to go back or mess around with the switches. So let's just check the NDR switch. If I put the router on, then cut the power. The reinstate the power, nothing happens until I hit the green here. Excellent, so that seems to be very much working. When I want to move the workbench, I just roll up the cable and store it underneath the power socket. So that is job done. I think that's a nice two or three hour project, which I think will give me benefit on this bench for many years to come. I'm glad I finally did that and got it out of the way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So until next time, remember, electrify your bench. Well, I don't mean electrify your bench, I mean that's just dangerous, but I mean put electricity to your bench with an NVR switch. Oh.